Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is DJ One for Off Interviews. Earlier this week, a brave young lady by the name of Savannah Pipkins took some photos of a dilapidated holding pen for dogs in Ellisville, Mississippi. Our own CEO, Cassandra Miller, interviewed her. This young lady is brave, and she did the right thing. She has been attacked by several in the animal control business. In the business it is. They claim that now that there is no longer a building which was demolished, there is no place to put the dogs. Enter Shannon Stewart Bates, Heather Chandler, and Kristen Vichon, AKW Southern Cross Animal Rescue. They are a no kill rescue that focuses not only on rescue but impacting the overpopulation so prevalent in the South. They aim to impact the severe overpopulation problem by not only rescuing animals but also helping through educating the public. Community outreach, foster networks, and transport programs they have big goals and big dreams. Due to the city's BSL ordinance, they are now scouting an area in the outskirts of Ellisville, Mississippi, to help with the homeless strays and promote spay and neuter programs. Please listen to an interview with CEO Cassandra Miller and Southern Cross Animal Rescue. Hi, it's Cassie Miller with ARF Radio. I'm here with Kristen and Heather from Southern Cross Rescue. Hi, ladies. How are you? Hello. Great, great. Thanks for coming on our show today. Gladly. We've gotten together to um, have you come on our show to talk a little bit about your rescue. Where are you located? We're in Jones County, Mississippi, with Laurel and Ellis still being the predominant town. So this is the situation with the Ellisville pound that was just recently destroyed. The holding facility, yes, ma'am. The holding facility, correct. Now, they... Have you been speaking with them about working with have a working relationship to get something going to help these animals that's coming into their county? We have gone before the city uh, council. We did that before any of this got started um, to just let them know that we wanted to come into the area, that we wanted to have a relationship and speak with them about it. We have not heard back, but they're a little busy at the moment, so that might be why. Uh, we're hoping that we can develop a working relationship and uh, help get, get things situated a little bit better there for them. Where are they taking the dogs currently? The facility has been demolished. We were told they are taking them to the uh, animal pound in Laurel, Mississippi. I don't know if they have plans to build something else or uh, what the further plans, but right now any dogs that they do capture will be brought to the pound in Laurel. Now, will they still be subject to the five-day hold? But I understand Laurel will no-kill. Well, no, the the pound that they're taking them to in Laurel is a is a kill facility. Um, there is a no kill facility in Laurel called the Animal Rescue League, um, but they wouldn't have the ability to take in animals from a facility. They they work with the public. Okay, so that's that's going to be a big plus for them when you guys get there. If I understand, you're looking at, at setting up your organization outside the city limits due to the BSL. Absolutely. We don't want to be subject to what we feel are extremely unfair and unrealistic and inhumane yeah. laws. We don't discriminate against any breed. Uh, we want to help Ellisville and all of Jones County, but we refuse to discriminate against a breed and not take in an animal just because of its breed. So we want to be close to Ellisville, but until they change that BSL you know, law, we don't want to be right in city limits. You're looking to purchase ground or purchase a building or what? Yes, we prefer a building that's already there um, that we right. could just retrofit to work. Um, we we toss the idea back and forth about buying land and constructing from the ground up. It would just take so much time. Um, and right now we're working out of a foster network, which has been tremendously helpful, but we could do so much more if we actually had a building sooner rather than later. You, you've been to the building that was demolished. I don't see how in the world that could have possibly been retrofitted. No, ma'am. It was very small, and uh, Ellisville doesn't have a huge um, influx of animals. It was not really adequate to hold them in any sort of humane manner. Well, I've seen it before in the gassing facilities, how the dogs still are so scared when they're in their sh in, their, in the pounds. What's your, what's your website page? Okay. Well, our Facebook is Southern Cross Animal Rescue. And our website is under construction right now, but we will have it up and running very, very soon. But it will be gar 
www.scarofms.org. And that's S-C-A-R. Uh, yes, S-C-A-R-O-F-M-S dot org. Perfect. Okay, we will have that on our page as well to promote. You'll have a donation button on your Facebook or on your on your website so yes. people can, can contribute. What is your PayPal account, if you would, please? PayPal account right on our Facebook page, and there will yep. be on the website as well. It's under Southern Cross Animal Rescue. Yep. Uh, and you don't, they don't have to have a PayPal account. It, it'll take them right to where they can donate. Yeah, we have an Amazon wish list as well. We just did a Walmart wish list and all that you can link to from the Facebook page. And local folks that want to donate, um, you know, we've got a P.O. Box that they can mail to, P.O. Box 2007, Laurel, Mississippi. Zip is 39442. Um, area, uh, folks in the Jones County area can bring donations to the Pet Sense store, and they'll hold them for us until we come get them. Any donations will help right now. We are raising funds for a building, but we also have over 50 animals in uh, foster homes right now that we still need to tend to and care for. So as simple as used blankets or bags of dog food. That's wonderful. You know, we have, please check into one of our great groups that we help to sponsor, and that is Covers for Critters, and it's C-O-V-E-R-S for Critters, and they, and they have wonderful ideas on how your hospitals, your hotels, your motels, your nursing homes, they're happy to give you and give their blankets and towels and things to you because it's a tax write-off for them and they're, they're throwing these away. So this is a great avenue for, uh, for blankets and towels and things like that that even to help out the fosters. There's quite a few different organizations out there that help. We're going to tie you into some of them to help you out with that. I know and get some contributors for you to get some help down there in Ellisville. I know the animals need it badly. I have to ask this. Maybe you could help me or maybe you could help shine a light on this. I understand there were three or four dogs in that hellhole that got out before, obviously, they were taken out and removed before it was was demolished. Right. Two of them were pit bulls. Um, One of them was a little fluffy dog of some sort, like a palm or poodle or something. And do we know where those dogs are now? Well, um, they were returned to their owner. Um, She was in the hospital um, and they returned them to her with the um, promise from her that she would find them other homes because she does live within the city. That's what we were told. We have heard conflicting things, but without communication from the city, it's really hard for anybody to confirm that. Now, those three dogs were hers or just the pities? We were told all the dogs in there were returned to the same owner. We were hoping so, um, and if you do reach her, that would probably be a big blessing for her because she's having to rehome her beloved pets just because they live within the city limits. How sad. How absolutely sad. If if you had, besides on your wish list, and besides getting this wonderful building, what would you like our listeners to hear? Um, you know, we love um, help getting a building up sooner than later, but even beyond, you know, so many people, this facility is not the only facility like this in the state or in the country. Um, and I'm glad there's been such an uproar because there are so many others just like this uh, without without rules and, and um, regulation on how to run these facilities and without anybody, uh, you know, monitoring them and checking up on them, it's, it, there's no way to um, stop it, you know. So we need folks to contact their local legislators and let them know that they, they, they don't approve of this and they, they need – to have regulations and follow-up and oversight of these facilities. Sure. You have an AC officer, animal control officer there? Um, there's not one for Ellisville that I'm aware of. Best I, just, I can tell, those are the ones that were picking the animals up. They said that was a, um, an individual from a different uh, county office that actually maintain the facility. Um, and, you know, it's kind of unfortunate that with a case like this, <laughs> A small little town, you think it'd be easier to get more details, but it's, it's really been difficult to find out what's really going on and who's really got some explaining to do. We're hoping that Mayor Waltrip gets back with you. Oh, yeah. And, We'd love yep. to talk to him, and I want to make sure I keep saying this, that we don't want the city to fund us. Um, that was the last little interview he did. He said that uh, he just he's not going to use taxpayer dollars to fund a shelter, and we don't really want that, honestly. We don't want to be answering to city council, and we don't want to be a kill facility that holds for five days and euthanizes. We want to be able to be free to rescue and rehome and transport and do all those things we do uh, without being directed by the city. 
Isn't there a dog tag law there? Um, dog tag law? Is there a dog license law there? Check with Kristen to make sure, but um, within the city limits, there are most of these cities in Jones County do have leash laws. Animals are supposed to be restrained on a leash, um, but well, tag laws been... and license laws don't don't exist. Ooh. They usually can't pass here. People turn them down. That's a revenue to help. But I I thank you very much for coming on. Absolutely. And I will certainly look forward to seeing you down there with the, with the new building. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. So, and again, thanks so much for stepping up to these animals. Thank you for getting the word out. You bet. And um, I know I'm talking to you soon. Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you, thank you, Heather. Thank you, Kristen. You're welcome. Thank you. Alrighty. Bye bye now. Bye. You are listening to Art Radio.